You've suggested that the classroom is a very important learning environment, and I'm assuming that means the, the gathering of people together and the sharing of ideas and the interactions, and, etc. Uh, what are your thoughts on online or blended learning environments? Well, I think we have to learn more about online learning environments because I think that I think they have tremendous potential, but right now what what tends to be happening is they don't grab a person's attention quite as much as as the dynamics of an of a live interaction. Um, it doesn't mean they can't. I mean, there's obviously the appeal of YouTube the appeal of a lot of online sources of interacting is showing us that there's tremendous potential there. But right now the way we use online teaching is we have, we tend to have um, somebody talking on into a microphone um, and we're seeing them on a flat screen and we can't interact with them and we can't really, um, we can't see the dynamics of the, of what they're doing and we can't it, it, it isn't quite as lively. It isn't quite as as compelling. I think as we go more into virtual reality approaches and as we improve the ability to combine a face with the mm. content of what somebody's saying, um, if, if we can take YouTube and turn YouTube videos, which are great instructional video sources, into a full course, I think you could really get a compelling course. But right now that's fairly expensive. So we tend to have things like WebEx where you see a PowerPoint and hear someone talk. And it's all right. You can learn that way. We've been learning off of radio. We've been mm. learning off of TV. But it just it's harder to pay attention. It's harder to maintain attention. And it doesn't have that same dynamic appeal, I think. But it sounds like there's certainly potential in developing these ideas. It's Without a doubt. Just a matter of time, I take it's it? It's a matter of time, and it's a matter of new technology. I mean, I, I look at the iPad as just opening a whole new world of of interactive educational resources. I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to talk about that because there's a lot of talk about traditional types of textbooks. And uh, earlier this year, this is, uh, this is March 2012, so earlier this year, Apple released their, uh, their statement about their continuing involvement in education. And they released the, uh, the iBooks author application for the Mac. And uh, I think that was obviously in, uh, well, in preparation for the release of the next generation iPad. And these textbooks offer a lot of interaction. Uh, these electronic textbooks, so they have quizzes built into them, and there's you know there's pinching and zooming and gestures, and it's a very lively experience. Uh, is is there merit in developing these resources? Because there's still some, well, the, some people are wondering whether this is just oh well, it's just another textbook. So is, is are we seeing the end of the textbook, or are we about to see the next generation? I suspect we're seeing the next generation of the textbook. I think that. That print media will always have an appeal for certain things. It's awfully nice to hold something in your lap and write on it mm. um, and have that writing be permanent. But I, I was just, I had an interesting experience flying over from Sydney to um, Perth. On the plane, they had an iPad in every seat, and it was a pilot program. And every single person in every seat had their own iPad. Wait a second. It was a pilot program. Yes. And you were on an airplane. Well, yeah, sorry. But yes, so it was just experimental. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right. But, um, and as a matter of fact, I was so concerned when I sat down, I went up to the flight attendant and said, somebody left their iPad in the seat. <laughs> well, the reason I'm telling you that is you could watch movies on it. You could play games on it. You could, have, there were educational things. You could listen to music. I have never seen a plane so quiet. I have never seen a plane where everyone is absolutely glued to this iPad. There's something about the iPad that's very compelling. And if something's very compelling, then if you can use it to teach, what you can do is have a very dynamic effect. It may be the novelty associated mm. with it, but it may be also something there, something about the, the tablet itself, the way we use it, the flexibility it has, the way we can move from one kind of media to another that people love. And if you love it, you'll learn from it. And if you learn from it, then let's use it. I can see the change in your body language already. <laughs> you're, just, you're getting excited just talking about it. Yes. Well, devices like iPads do create that very heavily focused attention. You said the plane was very, very quiet. I guess one could say that it draws people in on themselves. 
do we need to find a balance though between being really focused and isolated or uh, do we need to actually make sure that we also interact? I mean, I, I can imagine a plane with everyone just sitting there quietly looking you know, at their iPads. I, I think that that's what worries people about technology, that technology, something like Facebook, for example, is, is it actually bringing people together or is it isolating people? My belief is that humans are social animals and that we will find ways to socialize. One great way is athletics. So you can have people that are glued to that iPad when they're on a plane. It's interesting, they can learn from it. But if there were a big football game next door, as soon as they land, they would put that iPad away mm. and they would go. If there were a party being held and their best friend was there, they would drop that iPad and go. Not drop it, perhaps. But So I think that, that we don't need to be afraid of technology. Technology just adds one more dimension to our lives. It makes life more interesting. But humans are social, and we are going to find social outlets. And I don't think we need to worry as much about technology as, as people might be suggesting. I don't think it's going to create a society of automatons. Right. And one last thing, because I know we're running short on time, because I think it's another plane you have to catch. Should schools be concerned about students owning their technology in class and using their own devices, or is this something that we should just accept and encourage? I believe that we have to learn how to teach with this, not, not teach ignoring technology. I think we need to we need some of our technological wizards, the uh, Steve Jobs of the world, to figure out ways, and that's what Apple has tried to do, figure out ways that you can incorporate technology in the classroom to make the teacher more effective, not detract from the teacher. Mm. Right now it detracts from the teacher. Right now if I have an iPad, I'm going to be fiddling around with it and I'm not going to listen to the teacher. But there are a lot of individuals out there that, that say Alan November is one, for example, that says, no, we can figure out ways to use technology so that we're all better teachers, rather than saying, put your iPad away and listen to me. So I think that's the future of technology in education. I hope so. Oh, I do too. <laughs> Martha Burns, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.